Hi, it's Sandy Wiley. Welcome to my mental health channel. You got this, where I wipe away the stigma of mental illness by talking about my own personal experiences having borderline personality disorder. I talk about schizophrenia, bipolar, depression, anxiety, narcissism, and a plethora of other mental health topics. But I only come on as a former patient of almost 20 years. I am not a licensed therapist. I do not hold a degree in psychology, so I cannot give you a professional opinion. I cannot make a diagnosis on you. Um, I can only share with you my personal struggles. And all I ask of you in return is please be kind in the, in the comments below. Be kind to me, be kind to other people who comment, and be kind to yourself. We don't have to agree on everything, but we do need to agree on respect and kindness toward each other. Now, if you are new to my channel, welcome. If you like what you see, hit that like button. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button right there. That button that says subscribe because it's absolutely 100% certifiably free. <laughs> now... Today, I'm going to talk about why haven't I been hospitalized for my mental illness. A lot of borderline personality disorder patients have been hospitalized because of um, their mental illness, because of their personality disorder. Some people don't like me calling borderline personality disorder a mental illness. I've gotten that flack from people, okay? So whether you call it a mental illness or whether you call it just a personality disorder, whatever you want to call it, some people don't even call it borderline personality disorder. They call it emotional dysregulation or there's other names and everything like that. But I'm going to call it what, what I believe I have, borderline personality disorder. I've never been hospitalized for it. The only time I've been in a hospital for anything is when I was like eight years old. And I got my tonsils out. I got a tonsillectomy. And when I was 30 and 32, when I was 30, when I had my firstborn son, Alex, and when I was 32, when I had my secondborn son, Austin, three times I've been hospitalized. And none of that had to do with mental illness at all. All right. So why are a lot of patients, of course, if someone is hurting themselves, all right? And I'm not judging anyone here. Let me just say that straight off the bat before I even go into this. If you've been hospitalized once, twice, a dozen times, I'm not judging you. I'm not telling you that I'm better than you because I haven't been hospitalized for mental illness, all right? The whole purpose of this video is try to figure out why I haven't been hospitalized because a lot of times... I thought I was very, very this close to being hospitalized that I really probably should have been hospitalized. I'm just trying to, you know, figure it out along with you. I'm not trying to judge people who are hospitalized or saying people who aren't are better. None of that here, okay? Just want to get that straight out right away. So, my guess would be the, the people who are, like, suicidal, who have plans to carry out that because you have to have a plan my husband my not my husband my son <laughs> works in the mental health industry okay he's worked on crisis hotlines um so and i know a lot about psychology because i've been very interested in it in the past few years since i stopped going to therapy myself i've become like my own therapist that in order for them to hospitalize you if you have um, any kind of ideas of suicide is not just that you have like you thinking of suicide you actually have to have a plan um, you know along with it like I okay you're thinking about it you you want to do it you're hopeless you see no point in going on and then you have a plan you've made a plan to, to follow through that's when they'll hospitalize you um so a lot of people who have borderline personality disorder are suicidal and um, do try to harm themselves, do try to take their own lives. Um, and therefore, you know, if you've attempted something like that, whether 
whatever way you attempted it, whether you with with some sharp instrument or with a bottle of pills or what I don't know. Okay, if you did that, then of course if they find you, they will hospitalize you. You can be hospitalized against your will. You can um, in certain cases. If you're a harm to yourself or you're a harm to someone else and obviously if you try to take your own life then you're going to be a harm to yourself so I have never done anything like that which would put you know which would um, make me a candidate for for hospitalization against my will because I've never personally like harmed myself and I never personally harmed anyone else so no one could really, you know, um, there would be, you know, no reason to. I've never, um, you know, come up with a plan to harm myself or anyone else. And I, so I never have any of those. So that's, and, you know, that doesn't mean I'm not borderline because I don't have those, you know, symptoms. You don't have to have all the symptoms, right, to get the diagnoses of borderline. Two psychologists, one from Yale and one from Harvard, older psychologists, have diagnosed me with this, okay? So just in case, I want to make that clear too, because a lot of people think I diagnosed myself with this. No, I got confirmation from two psychologists um, that have been practicing 40 years in the profession, one from, and they're both from Ivy League schools, Yale and Harvard, that I am indeed have borderline personality disorder even though they know I don't have the symptoms of, you know, self-harm, which is one of the, you know, but I have all the rest of the symptoms tenfold. <laughs> um, so it could, it could be because I don't have those, you know, really those two severe symptoms of self-harm and, and suicide idealization. Um, also, I, but there were other things um, in my past that made me think that, you know, um, I should have been hospitalized because, um, or I could have been in a day program. A day program is you're not hospitalized, but you have to meet every day at a clinic or hospital setting where, you know, you spend like four or five hours. It's like a, you know, a job you go to and you go to every day, but you get to go home and you get to sleep. Um, personally, I've heard some horror stories. I known people who've been in those day programs and they're, they've been severely abused. I don't believe in institutions, okay? I don't. And maybe that's why, you know, um, I've never been hospitalized. Because I would never, ever allow myself. Um, because I've heard, even my own son, who has traumatic brain injury. My own son was sexually assaulted in an institute. He was beaten in an institute. He was tortured. He was severely emotionally, verbally, physically abused. I don't believe in institutions, okay? Um, so what do you do, you, you, someone would say. You know, what are you supposed to do if someone needs help like that? Well, I can only pray that you get into a good place, um, you know, a private place or somewhere. Uh, well, what if you don't have the money? See, I don't have all the answers here, you know. I just really don't like those. I've heard... From personal experience, I already know my son was abused in these places. I know someone else in my family who was abused in one of these mental hospitals. So, I'm just saying that from personal experience, um, I try to, you know, I think I just went under the radar. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, the time I, I, drove, um, I drove drunk and I never, and the police, um, came came to me and they asked me I remember I, if you look at that um that video that ex about my guardian angel how you know I got in a head-on collision and the police um pulled me over there and they uh, they um they told me that if the woman pressed charges because I left the scene of, I left the scene of the accident they told me if the woman pressed charges they'd have to arrest me but they never you know gave me a breathalyzer uh, and I was really drunk. I was extremely drunk when I was talking to the police. You know, I just sat there and like, I was like, he never asked me to step out of the car. Just go watch that other video because I don't want to waste time on this 
on this one about that one. So part of the reason could be why I've never been, you know, hospitalized is because I just, you know, went under the radar. You see what I'm saying? That um, I, it, I wasn't like noticed by someone like look at all the th uh, the psychologists a psychologist can commit you against your will if they think that you know look at all the psychologists that i went to i mean if you've seen other videos that never once said you know um this this woman isn't right uh she needs to be committed um so maybe i just went under the radar and um just nearly, you know, nearly scraped by with the skin of my teeth. And that's why, you know, I was lucky enough not to um, have been committed. I truly believe if I was committed, I would have um, totally broke down. I know they say when you have a nervous breakdown, um, they commit you. But if I was committed, I'd have a nervous breakdown because... Um, I could never stand being hospitalized. Never. Um, I, I just, I don't like, I, I don't like people telling me what to do, when to do it, um, what I can and can't do. Uh, you know, I don't like any restrictions on myself. I'm a free bird, okay? <laughs> this girl's a free bird. No one's going to tell me what to do, when to do it, what I can and can't do. Um, put restrictions on me, tell me what to eat, what time to eat, um, when to sleep, uh, you know, not allow me to drink. It's never going to happen, okay? Maybe I have such strong will because I know I would break in one of those places. I know they're supposed to help you, okay? They're supposed to help you, but I'm telling you, I would break. I would snap if I went in one of those, if I was hospitalized. I would snap. I would break, all right? Because I'm not the type of, you know, this birdie can't be caged. Let me put it that way. I'm a free bird, okay, like the song says. <laughs> I'm a free bird, all right? I can't be caged. And um, it would just, I don't, I mean, I and I don't believe in drugs either now i'm not trying to judge the people who are on prescription medication for you know their mental illness at all all right i'm not judging you i'm just saying i don't want to take it for myself just because i don't want to do something doesn't mean i'm i'm saying that you know judging you for doing it i'm with the school of thought if it works for you go for it awesome you know if, if, um, those kind of, you know, my son is on heavy, heavy, um, psychotic drugs, very heavy. My, my schizophrenic dad was on extremely heavy psych psychotropic drugs, uh, whatever you call them, you know, and he was, um, hospitalized. He was in, you know, McLean's hospital, Belmont. He was locked away and hospitalized for mental illness. All right. My son needs uh, those kind of drugs. Um, so I'm saying if, if hospitalization works for you and the drugs work for you and day programs, then awesome. You, you got to do what's best for you. All right. But I know what's best for me and that's not for me. Okay. It doesn't mean I'm better than you or I'm judging you. I'm just saying... I drink two glasses of wine every night, you know. When I went to, some people think I'm an alcoholic for doing that. When I went to the hospital for GERD, um, the nurse was very judgmental. You know, she said, you definitely have to get into AA. You definitely have an alcohol problem. Yeah. I said, well, I only drink two glasses of wine. She goes, so what? I don't drink at all. This is what she said to me. They're all judgmental in hospitals Let me that I've encountered. Let's put it that way. That I've encountered, they're all judgmental. The nurse said to me, this is, I don't know, I was coming in for, I thought I was having a heart attack, but I had GERD, um, get, you know, acid reflux, which gives you like chest pressure and pain in your chest. I didn't know. I thought I was having a heart attack, so I went to the hospital for, and they 
and they treated it and they said it was good. But the nurse asked me lots of questions and she asked me about drinking. And I told her I only had two glasses of wine. And she said, you need, you know, you have an alcohol problem. You need to go to AA, la, la, la. And I said, you know, it's only two glasses of wine. She goes, so what? I don't drink at all, you know. I mean, maybe it, if I go out w once a year or something, I might have one drink. Maybe, you know, maybe one, one a year, once a year. I don't drink at all. Like, ta-ta, you know, anyone who drinks, you know, every week or every day is definitely, you know, severe, severely, you know, with a severe um, addiction. And this was a nurse. So, okay. You can think what you want to think, and that's fine, you know. <laughs> but, um, so, I'm not going to listen to her, you know. Uh, she told me to go AA. I went to AA. I hate AA. Did I tell you guys that? I might have did in an older video. If AA works for you, your family, awesome, you know. Go for it. Whatever works. Whatever works for you or someone you love, do it, you know. I tried AA. I hate it. First of all, it's in a church. I hate churches, okay? Um, they make you feel guilty. If you, you can't have anything, you know, it's all or nothing. <laughs> They're like borderlines, all or nothing. If you have one drink, uh, you slipped off the wagon, you failed. Um, you have, oh, you know, they make you feel inferior. They make you feel like you're a failure, you know? You have to, you know, abide by their strict regiment. Um, also, they pass around a basket looking for money. Uh, you, you have to read from a Bible that mentions God. What if you're an atheist? Or what if you have other beliefs, you know? Um, you know, I don't, you know, if it works for you, awesome. But a lot of, most of the people have a big chip on their shoulder. They were, um, how can I put it? They were just like very um, bitter, cynical. Um, they didn't, it wasn't encouraging or stimulating for me. It, it just was a drag. I didn't like it. You know, hi, I'm Sandra. I'm an alcoholic. Why do I have to identify by that? Okay? That's what you have to say. Hi, I'm Mary. I'm an alcoholic. Hi, I'm Jim. I'm an alcoholic. You know, why do you have to say that? There's so many things I have against it. You know, like you have, that's your whole identity. I'm an alcoholic, you know. See what I'm saying? Instead of just saying, hi, I'm Sandy. That's it. Uh, no, you have to say you're an alcoholic. Everyone says it. Not for me. Not for me. But if it works for you, this is what I want you to understand. If it works for you, awesome. I'm all for it because we're all different, right? Like that nurse, you know, she didn't drink at all. And she couldn't understand how I drank two glasses of wine every night. You know, like, there's something wrong with you, lady. Uh, no, there is nothing wrong with me. And there's nothing wrong with you for not drinking. If you don't drink, there's nothing wrong with you. If you drink, there's nothing wrong with you. If you take drugs... You know, and it helps you. It doesn't harm you. You know, I don't want you to do things that are going to har be harmful. Whatever. If you vape, you know, we're all different. I'm not judging here. You know, so don't judge me. The whole point is I just was curious, you know, to thinking that I have a lot of mental illness and um, I've never been hospitalized for it. But I... I I did lose, you know, touch with reality um, a lot of times where I would um, never leave the house. Um, I just, you know, existed, you know. I just ate and slept. Woke up, eat, shower, sleep, and nothing else, you know. So there were times I couldn't even function. Um, what I mean by not function is I couldn't even go to a store and buy a loaf of bread. That's not functioning. I couldn't do anything. I was like severely traumatized. Um, I was in a state where I couldn't 
do anything. You know what I mean? If you ask someone, oh, can you go to the convenience store and buy a loaf of bread? I couldn't do that by myself. I'd have a, a major panic attack and I couldn't, I couldn't even do something simple. All right. So I wasn't functioning. I was having panic attacks all day long, you know, so I wasn't a functioning adult. So I think that, you know, if someone from the outside looked in would say that woman needs hospitalization, that woman needs a day program or she needs a lot of help because the woman is not functioning. So maybe I just slipped under the radar, like I said, could have been that, but um, I will never voluntarily be hospitalized. I just, uh, you know, but please let me know. Um, if you have been hospitalized, let me know your experiences about it. Maybe you have some positive experiences and maybe you could, you know, make me see different, you know? I don't know. I, let me know in the comments if you've been hospitalized for something. How did you feel treated? Did you feel like they treated you right? How was your experience? Was it a positive experience? Did you get better? You know, or did you get worse? Or, you know, let me know. I'm dying to find out from you guys. Let me know in the comments. Um, because that's how we learn. We learn from each other. Maybe you've had, you know, a good positive experience. And, you know, maybe you can make me see things differently. I don't know. So anyway, that's it for now. Let's keep in touch. Let's keep the comments rolling. Let's talk to each other. Um... I did an interview um, on Ruby Space Spacek S P A C E K Ruby Ruby S P A C E K. Uh, she interviewed me. Uh, she has. I'll I'll drop the link below. She has a great channel, by the way. She's an awesome gal. Love her. Um, I did my first interview on YouTube with her. I'm going to drop the link below so you can watch the interview and please subscribe to her channel. Okay. And she talks all about mental health too, just like I do. And it was an awesome interview because she's, she, she's a great person. She makes people feel at ease. She has a great channel about mental health. She's done great interviews. This Ruby Spacek, S-P-A-C-E-K. Um, I'll drop the link. I'll put the link below so, you know, so um, I'll put the link to her channel and I'll put the link to the video that she um, interviewed me on so you guys can watch it. All right. I hope you do watch it. It's great. And I hope you subscribe to her channel because she's awesome too. And she talks a lot about mental health and she's had a lot of personal experiences with it, just like I have even more so in, in some ways. Okay. All right.